Hey, what's up? This is John Baisley from Baroness, and you're watching The Pit. It wasn't as shocking as it, as it could have been, you know, under other circumstances. I know there's a lot of times when somebody leaves a band and it's just, you know, it kind of takes the band, the, the, you know, the rest of the band by surprise and, and nobody really knows how to react. There's like a lot of knee jerking, potentially uh, mean things you said to one another. But, it, you know, I feel very fortunate in that that wasn't the case with us. He's a very dear old friend of mine and, uh, you know, it was all with the best of intentions on both sides. So. I have a, a small company that makes uh, like fuzz pedals for guitar players and bass players and whatever. And we were shipping one off, and it, we noticed that the shipping address was, you know, within a mile or two of my residence. So I think my partner, who found her social media, uh, like her Instagram page or something, and he sends me a text like, "You really need to check this girl's Instagram page out. You'll know why when you go there." And I, I did, and she's, you know, like an incredibly talented guitar player. Uh, and I heard in some of the lessons and demos that she was doing something that was um, similar in spirit or execution to the way that, you know, to the way that Baroness uh, presents guitars. And so when Pete made the decision that he made, uh, it, it seemed very obvious to me because we had, you know, we had a connection, we had chemistry. I knew that her competency level with her instrument was, you know, perhaps above mine. She had a great attitude, like a good person. So. For this band, where we really, you know, it's really disadvantageous for us to, to hire people or to put out uh, an open audition call or anything like that. It was a very natural choice for us. So it's it's just a very nice, easy fit. And when that happens, you just have to move forward because it doesn't happen all the time. You know? It's coming along very nicely and uh, most importantly, in an almost effortless way. Having played music this long, the, the fear is that we have to? We'd have to force something. We'd have to, we, you know, we'd have to write a record because we, quote unquote, have to write a record in order to keep things moving along. We're in the fortunate position of wanting to move forward and wanting to move things along. So, the music that we write is born out of our desire to continue writing new material and to continue improving uh, our, our compositional craft, our technical craft, and then, you know, once we tour, our chemistry and presentation on stage. It's. it's I don't know, it's, it's awesome. Insofar as our material depends on and is based on our experience during the time in which we write it, yes, of course. I mean, I think there's, I think there's a lot of social frustration and uh, I think that, you know, without getting too specific, you know, there's certainly a lot of heavy opinions that people have. You know, there's a lot of there's a lot of discontent. There's a lot of concern and and uh, and potential anxiety as to you know how, what the future of our country is like. And I think that that makes it you know critical for artists and people in positions where they are artistically voicing opinions and, and saying things. Uh, it gives us almost an obligation to touch on the way that we feel, the way that we process what's happening around us. I'm so wary of supergroups, you know, so, so much more frequently than not, these supergroups end up sounding a little forced. Uh, I have not, I have not seen Prophets of Rage, and uh, unfortunately, and it's sort of embarrassing that I haven't listened to too much, you know, I've heard a track or two, so, uh, I think today it'll be interesting to, to, to witness it and see it, and I'll, I'll make a conclusion that I'll, you know, good, bad, or otherwise, I'll probably keep to myself. But I'm not, I'm not dying to join a supergroup.